Okay, so these are the mathematical form of our, of our wave functions, of our normalized wave functions, and we notice that they're just sine waves with, um, and uh, they, uh, they whose oscillations will, will be more rapid in space as n increases. So as n gets bigger, as we go to higher and higher quantum number, okay, then the, um, then the, uh, uh, the number of wiggles, the the uh, amount of oscillation will increase. Okay, and so let's look at these wave function gra these wave functions graphically. Let's graph them. Okay, and so I've basically now I'm plotting the wave functions um, within the geometry that we had defined. Again, where um, I should have drawn this, but before, but this, uh, oops. So this is. This is zero. This is x equals zero, and this is x equals l. Okay, and uh, and so I've basically driven uh, drawn the potential energies here, the walls. Although what I'm plotting is psi of x, so I'm just sort of superimposing our graph of psi of x on the geometry that we had. So in fact, this vertical axis is not energy anymore. It's um, it's the amplitude of the wave function. Okay, and so we see that the that the uh, n equals one, the, the lowest uh, energy mode, okay, has this form. It's just half of a wave length, okay, half of a full sine wave, and we this it should be implicit that um, that this because this is just the space part, but we have the time part, which makes it oscillate in time. So in fact, uh, at half a period later, half of a of a, a temporal period later, then the wave uh, function looks like this, and it's oscillating back and forth, just like uh, a wave on a string. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, wave function for n equals two looks like that. Okay. And again, we should we should recognize that that the um, that a half a period later. We get something that looks roughly like that, okay? And so it's oscillating uh, standing wave uh, uh, wave function. Uh, for n equals three, we get that, and for n equals four, we get that. So you notice that if we, as we go from um, one, oops, for one, um, for n equals one, we have one single antinode. Okay, an antinode is those are the parts of the wave which actually uh, vary in time, and two nodes at the end. Okay, for n equals two, we actually get two antinodes, and you also notice that n equals one is even. That is, it's symmetric with respect to the center of the. If we drew the center of the box here, then uh, n equals one is symmetric with respect to, respect to the center of the box, whereas n equals two is anti-symmetric. Okay, it's odd. We call that odd parity or odd symmetry. Um, oh, that's interesting. Um, n equals n equals three looks like this. Okay, we have one, two, three antinodes, and again, it has even parity. That is, is symmetric with respect to the center of the box. Okay, and finally, n equals four has uh, four antinodes. One, two, three, four. And is a, and is again anti-symmetric or odd with respect to the center of the box. Okay, in terms of symmetry. Okay, and so that's what our wave functions look like. And in fact, they have this. They all have the same amplitude, as you can see. They all have the same amplitude. Okay, which is equal to root two over l, as we uh, as we just solved for. Okay, and so um, they all normalize in the same way. Now we can actually draw. These wave functions, and what we often do is that we draw these wave functions superimposed onto the energy diagram. So here is an energy diagram, where again, now I'm drawing again the constraints, the walls, and now the vertical axis here is serves two purposes. It's both energy, so the ener the potential energy at the walls is infinity, and in the middle it's zero, and it also serves to allow us to to graph our our uh, wave functions. Uh, where we use the ener the energy axis now as sort of the zero of the wave function axis, okay, and so this is very this is a very common way of uh, depicting these wave functions.